another day, another great t-shirt, another video, another expansion team. Let's talk about the Hangzhou Spark. Uh, this team's been in the news recently for being super hyped up. People thinking that they're the best expansion team after they've scrimmed against them and by judging their roster as well. Um, and one of the best teams in the league as well, judging by early scrims, apparently. Uh, this is from a tweet by Monty, who was reporting um, not on his opinions, but on the opinions of some of the other teams that have been scrimming uh, from LA already. I had them ninth in my power rankings, um, which puts them just on the cusp of, uh, of playoffs. Wait, how big are playoffs this year? I don't know. That's a, yeah, I think it's top eight, right? Make playoffs. I don't know. Who knows? <laughs> um, so I think a good range for them would be somewhere around 15th to 5th. I think they could be like a really good team. I think that their peak is just being like just outside those podium finishes, somewhere around 5th, 6th. Um, and I think worst case, they would only end up being like a... Uh, they, they, I don't think even in the worst case scenario, they would end up being a, a really bad team. So somewhere around 15th to 5th, I think, is a good range for them. It's difficult to tell because like the Defiant... A little bit like the Defiant. Um, they have some middling talent that I think could perform really well if they get their teamwork going together. And if they don't, then I think they might drop off a little bit. But we'll see. And we've only heard good signs so far, so uh, sounds good. Okay, so where did this team come from? If you're new to the Hangzhou Spark, uh, they are dressed in pink now, and everybody loves them because of it. Maybe you have a jersey and you just haven't checked yet. You just, I don't know, felt compelled to buy the pinkest thing that was in the shop. It happens to us all. Don't worry about it. Uh, so they've, they, they were kind of a merger between X6 and 7, two teams from Korean contenders. And uh, honestly, neither of these two teams were like powerhouse teams, in my opinion. Um, 7 had a couple of good players that looked pretty flashy, looked like they had potential, but the teamwork wasn't there. X6, the teamwork was there, but um, only in certain metas. They seemed like a pretty meta-dependent team. Uh, they won uh, Korean Contender Season 1, so it might sound strange to to hear that I don't really consider them a powerhouse team. Um, but I think they got pretty lucky with the bracket draw in that one, and also I think that it was a good meta for them. So, which of the players have they actually taken across? They've taken the tank duo of No Smite and Rhea, um, and No Smite's interesting because he you, he plays like a, a, a fairly resource heavy kind of carry style but in a smart way so he's not overly aggressive he's just the, a lot of the focus a lot of the attention is on him he's the one that's going to initiate the play he's not necessarily going to go in and um, destroy everybody but a lot of the, the the focal point of the team seems to be on him um, and uh, he struggled a little bit when he had to play uh, like Ryan inside goats and stuff like that where you have to take a bit more of uh, you can't take such a leading role. It's more that you have to play around the rest of your team's cooldowns and stuff like that. So we'll see. I think he could be a fairly meta-dependent main tank. Not expecting him to be one of the powerhouse tanks of the league. Um, perhaps he could. We'll see. I, I don't expect him to be in the top five tanks, even though I think his team could make top five. Uh, Rhea is the off tank for this team as well. Um, the, a lot of synergy between these two. They've been playing together for quite a long time. And uh, Rhea seems fairly stable. I don't really have much to say. Uh, it's hard to um, get good footage of D.Va players unless they really stand out to you. Didn't look like a problem on the team. I don't think he's going to really stand out either and be one of the top main tanks, but this is a good tank line. It's not like this is going to be the problem. I think this is uh, a fairly solid tank line that they've taken over. Um, the DPS is interesting because they've picked up... Go so the, the core from X6 was that tank duo with Godsby, who is this hyper-flexible DPS player that used to play for X6. Or, yeah for a long time um and it has been seen on a, a ton of different heroes and is a little bit this is going to sound weird but is a little bit like sure for kind of he can play everything but it seems like if you just give him a couple of heroes and allow him to grind them he's going to be a lot better like if you just give him widow and mccree for example or you just give him genji or you just give him maybe tracer I don't think his traces that good, actually. So, you know, th those kind of heroes, like a, a hit scan, a, a Widowmaker, or a Genji, something like that. He's actually good. Like, if that's all he's playing in the meta, if the meta's fairly stable, I think he's going to be, like, a good player on a, a few core heroes. Um, but he's had to flex so much in his career that often he looks kind of mediocre. Or He's, like, a good fill player. So I think this team would be excellent if he was paired alongside somebody who was really explosive. I think Godsby could be an excellent secondary DPS player. Um... 
but who is that? On this team, he's with Bazzi and Adora. Adora was the backup, like a sub for seven, um, and Bazzi was on seven as well. But Bazzi was, well, Bazzi used to be a flex support, so you may have seen him at some point in the past playing for seven on Zenyatta. Was a very good Zenyatta, isn't going to get playtime on that hero in this team as far as I'm aware. Uh, he's going to be basically like a Widowmaker main. His Widow is really sick. Uh, he's uh, definitely one of the best Widowmakers that's entering the league for like brand new this season. Alongside people like Happy from The Charge. Um, who else has got a sick Widowmaker that's coming into the league? I don't know. I can't think of anyone off the top of my head. Okay. Well, that was uh, a pointless little trip down memory lane for, for me. <laughs> okay. Um, so maybe, maybe the second best, maybe I'm just forgetting a lot of people. Okay. Um, but Bazzi doesn't really have the depth to his hero pool. He, he's primarily a hit scan, but also within that primarily a Widowmaker. So you don't, oh, he also plays a little bit of Tracer, but you don't really see him on many heroes outside of Tracer or Widowmaker. Might be because of the meta, but we'll see. So I would expect Bazzi to be kind of like a person who comes in whenever Widowmaker's in the meta, maybe whenever Tracer's in the meta, um, plays that kind of um, very strict role to the Godsby who just flexes over everything. And then Adora, I think, will basically fill in everything else. If you can't run Bazzi, you'll run, a, you'll like fall back to Adora and Godsby. Um, and Adora uh, has a, a reasonable Genji, um, also had to play Tracer for seven occasionally, Played a bunch of other heroes for seven, but I don't really know what his most comfortable hero is. He was like the sub for the team that they brought in occasionally to play whatever the other people didn't want to play. And because Barry Bazzi's got such a weird hero pool, it puts a door on a, a lot of weird heroes that he doesn't look too comfortable on. So I think Spark have got some work to do to really figure out what is the most comfortable setup with their DPS. And honestly, even adding another DPS player, maybe I'll get into that later, but adding another DPS player, I think, for Spark would really elevate their, their potential of what they can do with this team. But, okay, they're covered f fairly well. And if it's a Widowmaker meta, I think Bazzi is a very good one. Um, and if it ends up being something else, then they really do have the depth in their tank line and support line to be able to fall back and just have their DPS be secondary. Um, so who have they got in support? Because I think their support line is really excellent, actually. A guy called IDK, who I've been hyping up for a long time, even when people were looking for signings in... Uh, in 2018, in the mid-season, I was telling people to pick up this guy. Nobody did up until right now, and at the moment, he's one of the hottest uh, main supports that's come onto the market alongside guys like Jexo, who's gone to the Soul Dynasty. Uh, IDK used to play for Freak of Freaks Blue, and then he played for pff, Lunatic High's second team, I think, and then he played for Lucky Future Zenith as well. Ended up picking up some trophies in uh, the Pacific region. Uh, very talented player. Uh, I think he's a good caller as well, but I'm not 100% sure on that. Um always harder to find information about uh, callers when they're not um, in English, uh, but a very good Lucio and a very good Mercy, so very talented player. I would expect him to be uh, super solid in the back line of Spark, and he's going to be supporting either Revenge or Bebe. I personally would expect Revenge to start here, but I may be wrong. Uh, both talented um, Zenyatta and Ana players, um, flex supports from X6, or from 7 and X6 respectively, um, and uh, some of the best coming in from Korean contenders. Now, there's a lot of talented flex supports coming in from Korean contenders. And it, whereas that role used to be um, kind of devoid of talent, if you think about it, the, in, in the West, there was like Unko and Chips. And then in uh, Korea, there was Jaehong and I don't know, a few other people that you'd be able to mention. Now it's just saturated, man. I mean, you got you got Bedoshin, you got Neko, you got Aim God, you got Jonak, you got Violet, you got Revenge, uh, you, you got a bunch of people, um, Twilight as well. I mean, there's so many good flex supports in the league now. It's an incredibly competitive position. So even somebody as good as like Revenge or Bebe, I think is still not going to be like a carry position because there's so many other good flex supports in the league. But an excellent addition nonetheless. I think this is a super solid backline. Uh, definitely up there in terms of best in the league. Uh, probably somewhere around the fifth position, I, I think I would rate it. I'd just spitball in there, though. So, very good tank line, very solid, lots of rapport together, very good back line as well. Uh, the DPS may be a bit of question marks, um, but it's a very solid team overall and pretty meta resistant as well, apart from maybe Bazzi, who kind of mixes things up a little bit. Now, the real keys to unlocking this, the potential of the Spark, though, in my opinion, are with their Chinese players. So up until now, all of those players have been Korean. 
Um, and their Chinese players are Gu Shui, who you will have seen at the World Cup if you've been paying any attention because the guy was absolutely fragging. He was unreal. It was like he had a Dragon Blade in his hands every time he Primal Rage. The guy's got absolutely nutty Primal Rage mechanical skill, like getting those double hits every single time. I don't think I've seen anybody who's as good with his Primals as Gu Shui is, actually. It looks like he's just been in a like a private server or playing against, I don't know, every time he plays ranked, all he's focusing on is making sure he's mechanically like 100% perfect with his Primal Rages. The guy is insane with them. Uh... Now, people, whenever someone's got a really good Winston, they always like to say, oh, but his Reinhardt isn't that good. People say that with gesture for some reason. That's not true. Like, uh, reinforce, I'm calling you out here. I think you've slipped into the meme of thinking because someone has a good Winston that Reinhardt must be shoddy. Gesture's Reinhardt is not terrible. It's not, as you said in your power rankings, a meme, son. And neither is Gushwe's, but it's not at the same kind of level. He's not like a, you know, like a Fisher, whereas Reinhardt's just insane as well. But it's good, it's solid, he can certainly play it. That won't be a problem for him. And he, he just has so much more playmaking and superstar potential than No Smite does that if they ever manage to integrate him in, bear in mind, he has a language barrier there, he would have to stop speaking Chinese, presumably, and learn to speak. I, I don't mean stop as in give up Mandarin. <laughs> but, but when he's communicating with the team, he'd have to primarily do it in, uh, in Korean. And also Crystal, who you'll have seen at the World Cup as well. A phenomenally talented, very flexible uh, not quite as good as Leave, in my opinion, but Leave's underage, uh, not eligible for play this uh, this year. Uh, but Crystal's very good. Flex DPS player, but also plays the Widowmaker to a high level. I mean, this guy's a nut. If you can get him in, you absolutely should. A Crystal alongside Godsby would be mwah, just a really good duo. This team, if it was able to get over the language barrier and everyone integrated properly, it, the potential for this team is nutty. Um, but that's assuming they can get their players on the same page in terms of the language. Now, it's also been reported that Sashin, or reported or leaked, I'm not 100% sure, it like came, th these like rumor leak thing comes from, uh, they come from Chinese or, uh, or Korean organizations sometimes where they uh, release it in English before it's been like announced in English and everyone's like, what is this for real? I don't understand. So it was reported that anyway, that uh, a guy called Sashin would join the team. I think this is a good pickup. I think um, Sashin's got a couple of heroes that he's really good at, Genji, Farah, um, Junkrat? Not 100% sure. Can't really remember. The last time I was watching Sashin was a while back. Um, but he does have a very promising Genji and Farah. Um, and I think within the system of the Spark, I I don't think he's going to be like a, a unbelievably nuts player straight out of the out of uh, out of the park. But the fact that you can integrate him in with all of these other talented, experienced people on the Hangzhou Spark, I think will really add something to this team in terms of the depth that they have on that DPS roster. Because as I was saying, Adora, not too big a fan of his. Um, I don't think that he's like going to be a star player for this team. They need someone to be a star player alongside Godsby. And they have Bazzi if you're playing like a Widowmaker meta. Maybe Tracer, but I don't think Bazzi's that good. But for all of the projectile stuff that you want to play alongside Godsby, Sashin would be your guy. So I think this is a really good pickup if indeed it turns out to be true until they can get Crystal integrated into the team. And at that point, I think Gushwe and Crystal are the star players that really make Spark just come alive. I think the potential for this team is incredibly solid. Um, they've also moved over the coaches from X6 and 7. So if you remember, those are the two teams that they blended from Korean contenders. And they've nicely kind of tread the balance, I think, be between roster preservation. So you don't have to work on the fundamentals. I don't think this team should should have to start at, you know, the base level, working over communication and tendencies and when to go aggressive and how to communicate and coordinate uh, disengages and engages because a lot of these guys have played together before. And the few that haven't uh, come from another team that's all played together. So the the roster merge, in this sense, has been uh, fairly well executed, I think. And because you have the head coach or one of the top coaches from X6 and from 7, they can work together to integrate the systems as well. So I think this is a, a good method. I think they'll have kept a lot of the fundamentals that will keep the coordination and teamwork there. Um, but they've also created a kind of super roster between the two of them. So I, th I think that's good. If we look at the schedule of this team, I'll just pull it up. Not for you guys, but for me. <laughs> Unlucky. Uh, in week one, they play the Dragons and the Valiant. Uh, in week two, they play Houston and London. In week three, they play Shock and Gladiators. In week four, they play Defiant, and then they don't play anybody in week five. Um, now, if we are to believe the rest of the Al teams, and Hungry Spark has been doing really well in scrims early on in the season, this could be a perfect time to face... Uh, 
uh, Houston, uh, Defiant, um, and especially London, actually, early on. Now, these three teams are from the Atlantic Division, which means you only the Hangzhou Spark only have one game against Houston, London, and Defiant all league, all, the whole year, all throughout 2019. They only play these guys once, and they play it in the first stage. They play Houston and London in the second week. If you were to face London at any time, you would want to play them early on, before they really get into their rhythm, before they're in a meta that favors their individual skill. They'll still have a ton of coordination. They've still got some incredibly talented players. It will be insanely difficult. But if I was to pick a time to face them, it would be now, definitely. Especially if I feel really hot, if I'm coming off like a run, I've been prepping super hard for the beginning of the season, I feel like my team's got a bit of an edge over the others because it kept some of its core together better than the other ones did, like for example the Defiant, which is a roster that's just been built completely from scratch. Um, Houston as well, if they can come out of the gates and, and rock Houston before they know what they're, what's going on, I think this is a good time for Spark, I think they've got a good schedule at the beginning. Um, so it'll be really interesting to see. Uh, in theory, I think they should be favoured over the Dragons, which is their game one. It'll be interesting how they stack up against the Valiant. I don't think anyone has a good read on the Valiant at the moment. Um, and then they play Houston and London. So the first four games should give us a great read of where Spark are at and where the competition's at. And should really tell us a bit about their trajectory, too. Um, so good time if you're wearing pink and like, I don't know, scientific rail anime or something. I never understood that. I don't understand. But never mind, because uh, it's out of my depth, I'm sure.